but I want to start by telling a story of failure. Uh, I run a company that helps US entities to do business in India. And I was approached several years ago by a friend, Cliff, whose business partner, Dan, had been approached by another outsourcing company whom we won't name, and they asked to buy the services and products of this company. And so they hired me and my firm to guide them on their journey to India and their journey to pitch this particular company. Um, and a number of things happened. The founder fell sick and so on. And the presentation there went OK, but not so great. Um, one of my employees in India is extremely well networked, as most of our people are. And we said, you know, while we are here in India, let's see if we can meet with Tata Consultancy Services, since they are the biggest of the players in India. And I said, well, who do we know there? Uh, well, so my, my employee Purnima says, you know, when I lived in Mumbai, Mr. Ramadarai, who was the CEO at that time, you know, his wife and I were good friends because our daughters or kids studied at the same French school and so on. Let me call him up. And the next day, we had an appointment to visit uh, uh, TCS, and uh, my client was pitching these educational training services uh, to the team at TCS. And as we walked in, we saw this sign in the, you know, in, in the lobby that says, this was around 2006 or seven. That our goal is to be one of the top 10 consulting companies in the world. Okay. Now, my, my client, uh, you know, typical East Coast Bostonian kind of person, he kind of looks at that and says, what are they talking about? You know, uh, probably somebody will buy them. You know, maybe that's the best way. And then we went in and we, we made our presentation and you know, this was, a, if I remember right, the, the audience was the head of a HR, Commodore Mahapatra, and he said, you know, I think we could use your services to, if, when we interview potential employees, uh, before that we can put them through this test. And so he, this, my client said, oh yeah, we have this great test that you can run, and it has 500 questions. And he says, no, you know, at TCS, for this to work, we need to have at least 50,000 questions you know, because of the nature of the hiring that we do, you know. And that was pretty much the end of discussion for, for, my, for my client, Dan. That was not something they could even fathom that they could get to because of the scale and size of the operations that TCS has. Right. Now, this was back in, like I said, the early 2000s. Today, you know, and that TCS was at that time a, not even a company. It was part of Tata Sons. It was, you know, not listed. Okay, they went, they went and had an IPO. Uh, and today, TCS is, on a typical day, valued by the Indian stock market as higher than Reliance, okay? If you look at the top consulting firms in the world, you know, Accenture, IBM, which is in consulting, but they do a lot of other things too, or at least they used to. And TCS, they're right up there. So not the top 10, they're among the top three now, okay? Uh, Anand Krishnan has been the chief technology officer for Tata Consultancy Services for many years. I first met Anand when uh, I was involved in the pan IID movement in the 2000s, and they were hosting a conference in Chennai, and we had a nice meeting at that time. Uh, uh, the IID conference there went fabulously well, and when we were planning this event, I, I said there's really, it has to be, be based on the schedules of two people, uh, and if we can get them both on the same day, we'll have the conference. One of them was Anand from TCS, and one of them was Professor Khosla, who's now in the room from UC San Diego. So thank you so much for, for making this event possible. Uh, thank you, Anand. And I will have some questions, but what I want, I do everything backwards. My name is Gunjan Bagla. I run Amrit, which is a management consulting firm, and we help American companies to do business in India. What I want you to do right now is to think of the questions you would have for the chief technology officer of one of the largest companies in the world. How many employees do you have now? 440,000. 440,000 employees, okay? I can envision a day soon where TCS will be the largest employer in the world. Anna, tell us a little bit about the scope and structure of TCS today. Thanks, thanks, Munjan. Pleasure to be here. Um, 
So TCS today, Tata Consultancy Services, is, uh, like you said, um, a listed company in India, both the stock exchanges. Uh, vital statistics, we are uh, uh, over $21 billion in, in annual revenues, uh, which makes us uh, in the top three um, in our industry, IBM, Accenture, TCS. The um, number of employees has been talked about. The way we are structured, we are headquartered in Mumbai. Um, we are structured around our business lines. Uh, there are business lines specifically around industries. So banking, financial services, and insurance is about half our overall revenue, about 45, 46%. Uh, my colleague Kamal here runs uh, communications, uh, media, and information services, which is uh, about a sixth of the total. Similarly, retail, manufacturing, uh, energy, utilities, healthcare, these companies, which are the world's thousand biggest corporations, are the customers of TCS. We do many things for them. We traditionally have done a lot of IT work for them. So the CIO of these companies is our customer. But in the last 15 years, we are significantly present in working with the CMO, the Chief Marketing Officer. So we have a very strong digital business. Um, we have designers, we have design studios, we have uh, media marketing, consulting, we have uh, uh, another line of business aimed at the CTOs. Uh, we do research and development uh, outsourced from these companies, uh, the world's best engineering companies, the world's best product companies. So engineers and, and, uh, and, and scientists do contract uh, research for them. Uh, we run for the life sciences and pharma industry very specialized uh, activities like, for example, something like eight out of ten clinical trials in the world are run by us. And lastly, this is a fun fact for all the IITians in the room. In India, we run the biggest examination testing service. So JEE, uh, GATE, uh, CAT, uh, the, um, the, 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 the secondary services of the, the central and the state governments like the uh, police inspectors exam and so on and so forth, the 10th standard central board exam, the 12th standard central board exam, uh, they're all run uh, by TCS. In addition, of course, we run our own hiring, like Commodore said many years ago. Uh, there is a TCS national qualifier test, like the GRE, which any engineering grad in India can take. You can publish your TNQT score. A lot of them put it in their bios. Uh, with a high enough TNQT score, you can apply for a TCS interview, and we hire them. Because 3 million to 4 million people apply to TCS every year. We can't afford to interview people uh, by individually going and talking to them. So that's what they do. Okay. Now, uh, here in the United States, we have uh, quite a bit of trade with China. And so this morning, I took a shower at this hotel. The shower curtains had made in China. Okay. You touch almost anything, it's made in China. Can you tell us some examples of products that have TCS embedded in them that we might you know, we, we might come in contact with on a daily basis? In the U.S., which is, as I, uh, which is uh, arithmetically about half of TCS's overall business, across all those industries that I talked about, um, many, many of the significant brands that you are familiar with um, have TCS embedded in them. So take this hotel. Uh, Marriott is a long-standing TCS customer. Uh, so every time you log into the app, you do something with a Marriott hotel, uh, you transact, you reserve this room, you uh, stay, you have the loyalty points, that's TCS underneath that. Um, you go to uh, an airline, uh, the four major airlines, Delta, United, American, JetBlue, uh, and of course uh, the other, the smaller ones, Alaska, uh, they all use TCS for one or more of their critical services. Uh, if uh, you have uh, a, a media uh, and, and uh, communications interface, the telcos, uh, Verizon, um, Comcast, uh, these are clients of TCS. So if you buy an Xfinity service from Comcast, uh, TCS engineers have actually built that, support that, manage that as we go forward. You go shop at a Walmart, a Target, a Best Buy, a Staples, and, and on and on. Um, 
you buy a General Motors car. Uh, in France, uh, uh, Total, which is the biggest French company, uh, they're transforming their entire digital backbone. Uh, refinery 4.0 is what they publicly call it. Uh, that's being done by, by TCS engineers and so on. So across the world, uh, major companies have TCS inside, just like you know, in a past era, Intel said Intel inside. Yes. Uh, this is TCS inside. Yeah, I do a lot of public speaking and I talk about <laughs> I talk about this concept of India inside, you know. Uh, China is visible, but India is inside. You know, the, ph the pharmaceuticals you take are made in India typically. You know, here we, we want to really get into, you know, we are, we are all smart people in the room and IITians and non-IITians alike, you're all welcome in this room. Uh, we want to get inside, you know, really into typical day that Anant might experience. You know, so tell us a little bit about that. I know you travel a lot, but what, what, what's a typical day like for the CTO of a 400,000 person company? Um, so my responsibilities as chief technology officer are threefold. One is that I worry about the future technology backbone for our company. Um, so research and development uh, is my uh, primary responsibility. So Gautam Shroff, uh, IIT Kanpur, uh, same year as me, 85. I was Delhi, he was Kanpur. Uh, Gautam is the head of TCS Research. He and his team of chief scientists, about a thousand of them, we are the largest software research uh, uh, group in India uh, by, by, a, by a mile. We invent stuff, everything from computing to AI to the usage of computing and AI in life sciences, in material sciences, in behavioral sciences, even uh, media and inter entertainment and so on. We file patterns, we publish in the best academic venues and so on. So that's responsibility number one, which has a 10-year horizon. Uh, uh, Dr. Khosla is on our board, so he, he, he probably uh, you know, be not too happy with us, but he keeps pushing the boundary on what we should be doing for the future that TCS will be. So that's responsibility one, and I work a lot with our research teams figuring out what's the next big thing. So uh, one thing which is on top of my mind is, uh, is, is the ethics in AI. Right? We're doing a lot of AI across industries. Uh, are we building it right? Will that be the, the right future? Second responsibility I'm resp is, is with our co-innovation network. Uh, we have uh, 1,000 people in research, another 3,000 in, in product development and engineering. Uh, this is outside of the other stuff that I said. There are 10,000 or more people in TCS who do contract research for our customers. They are not my responsibility. They are they're part of a business group. These people invent things for TCS. The 500 patents or so that we file every year are TCS and, and not somebody else. But we can't do everything ourselves. So we partner significantly with the world's best universities. Uh, here in the US, all the usual suspects uh, are there, uh, the East Coast ones, the California ones, the Midwest. Uh, we have significant research presence. We have established two labs here, one in Cornell Tech in New York, focused on AI in retail. The second one's coming up in Carnegie Mellon. Again, AI robotics in the context of the manufacturing and automotive industry. Uh, so university partnerships, uh, uh, startups, we have a network of over 1,800 startups globally that we engage with. We have, as I said earlier, a deep insight into the problems and challenges of the world's best companies. Many of those we can solve ourselves with our own smart technology, IP, and so on. A lot of those problems we can't solve. So if you're a startup in New Zealand, uh, yesterday I was in Toronto, we connected up uh, a challenge that one of the, the big financial institutions in Toronto has with their call center uh, with this company which is looking very promising in New Zealand and TCS will integrate that solution into their thing, combining it with something that we have, the startup brings and the, the financial institution's problem is solved. Uh, for that company in New Zealand, this is like mana out of heaven, right? So that's what the co-innovation network does. Uh, we partner with the major uh, uh, tech companies, the Googles of the world, the Qualcomms of the world, the Intels of the world, and go to market together. So I spend a lot of time on the partnering part. And lastly, I'm responsible for our new products and services, which is the new things that TCS will do. So it's a busy day. Okay. okay. We have a lot of questions here, so I request just quick answers to these. Okay. Okay. So uh, Ravi from USC uh, up here wants to know, uh, <laughs> 
what's the most, most exciting application of AI that TCS might be working on? Now you have to understand, 400,000 people, you may not know the answer exactly. <laughs> so um, the, 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 the necessary and the most successful stuff is putting AI into our own business. Uh, today, the consulting technology services, applications, and, and so on work is very human. Uh, we have this program running called Machine First, which will initially amplify the capability of a human being so that one TCS person uh, tomorrow can do the work of 10 TCS people today. So think of it as you know, Zuckerberg is building Jarvis for himself for personal productivity. Uh, think of this as Jarvis for every TCSer in what we do today. Right, so the machine first program has many aspects of it. That um, Igneo, our, our flagship product there, is, is extraordinarily exciting. And it is, it is exciting for us. It's perhaps so deep under the covers for the rest of the world that they won't care, but it will make the world a better place. So that's one. If I flip it to the other side, consumer facing, a lot of the uh, usage of AI today has been to sell more to people you know, Google's AI and so on, or Amazon's AI, is about giving you the next best offer. The usage of AI in driving operational efficiency in, let us say, um, a power plant, or uh, a telecom company, or a bank, uh, has huge implications. Right? And, and so can AI make those decisions to, to operate the world's largest corporations uh, more efficiently? So that's, that's another part. The last is, AI on the front, which is the, uh, the kind of example that I just mentioned, uh, can AI be the face of technology to the customers of our customers? Uh, so we are involved in redesigning the automotive experience. Uh, you know, TCS is part of Tata Group, so Tata Motors, Jaguar are our, our, our own cousins within the group, plus we work with all the leading auto manufacturers. And boy, are we looking at some fantastic applications of uh, what you will be doing in your personal transportation uh, five years from now. Today, if you look at it, uh, a, a 1,300 kilogram car is transporting a 75 kilogram human being um, and, and not doing it well. Um, even the autonomous car is an incremental step. Essentially, it tries to, a Tesla is still overkill for transporting one person. Um, so there will be more coming in that direction. Okay, great, great. Now you mentioned some other Tata companies, and so let me take up this next question. So if you go to the Tata.com website, there are some striking statements that when I do my workshops on doing business in India, I often start from there. There's a line there that says, you know, here's a group of companies that is capitalistic in objective, but socialist in nature, something of those words. <laughs> Okay, and I picked that line out because that is mind-boggling to most American executives. The word socialist on a you know, corporate website. You know, most Tata companies, you know, uh, the Tata family itself is, you know, the individuals aren't very rich, right? You don't see their name on the Fortune, you know, on the Forbes 400, okay? Because most of the shares are owned by the Tata trusts, right? And, and there's a, common culture that runs across the Tata companies. But the question from the audience here, I'm not sure who asked this question, is about your company's culture, about the TCS culture. What sets it apart you know, from a Wipro or an Accenture or, or an IBM? So uh, the, uh, the Tata culture certainly is a backbone of what TCS is. Uh, and being part of the community, being part of uh, 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 our, our stakeholders in a unified way, you know, we, uh, we read this now a lot in, in as the Western press about the changing face of capitalism, uh, companies being more responsive and so on, but that's, that's how we are and that's how we have been years. for 150 years now. Tata Group is 150 years old, TCS is, is 50 years old. Um, what sets us apart, you know, I've never worked anywhere else. I, 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 I fooled around in IIT Delhi for a while and uh, eventually graduated with two degrees and, and joined TCS uh, 32 years ago. What attracted me then is very true even today. You know, the, the ethics and values are 
are top notch. You are not uncomfortable doing anything uh, that you, you individually uh, don't believe in. You know, the company's beliefs and, 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 and my beliefs are identical. The second is that we work bloody hard. Um, when I, uh, I joined, when Kamal joined, the company was 10 crores, 15 crores of revenues, which is probably um, less than, in those days, exchange rates, $10 million. So we know what a small company is. And in a small company, the customer comes first. The, you know, it doesn't matter your personal comfort and, and everything else kind of follows. That work culture is, is still extremely, extremely true. So stay close to the customer and, and, and listen and engage. Lastly, there is this whole notion of um, investing way ahead of time. Uh, the TCS research started in 81 when we were nothing as a With company. Professor E.C. Subbarao from IIT Subbarao Kanpur. Subbarao from IIT Kanpur founded it exactly. Right? Um, so those are things, you know, leading uh, excellence, integrity, um, you know, treat our people well. That's, that's what, and, and it's, it, these are not uh, just words. I mean, you actually feel them every day. And many of the companies, you know, Infosys, Wipro, they do this extremely well too. I mean, it's not that they are not doing these, but we feel that we, we, are, we really believe in these. Thank you. Now, I know you hire people from all the top universities in the world, and uh, I just want to get a sense of, uh, TCS is probably the largest employer of IIT alumni in the world. You know, uh, uh, how, how do IITians do within your company, and are you looking to hire more? So we uh, uh, have a very structured hiring program in India for IITians. How about here, like from this room? Yeah, I mean, sure. Uh, <laughs> see, see me in the break. <laughs> right? uh, no, really, seriously, in, in, no, the U.S. is one of our uh, most significant uh, markets. Uh, last year, I think, or, or cumulatively in the last three or four years, we have hired, I think, 15,000 uh, people, Americans, in, in, in the U.S. Uh, and we are all now rated as one of the top employers in the U.S. across industries as well. So uh, that part, I think, is, is quite clear. But going back to your earlier point on IITians in, in India, uh, there is a special program that I run for IITians. I mentioned to you the national qualifier test and all the rest of it. Uh, for the IITians, we have a, a, a graduate internship program, a postgraduate internship program, a PhD program. Um, and so... IITians get hired only after they jump through these hoops. And it's predominantly into my group, into research. We hire, we intern about 200 IITians a year. Now there are 20 plus IITs. We don't go to all 20 campuses, we go to about 10. Uh, and the cycle is, is that about 120 odd get hired every year out of that pool of 200, which is the cohort that they were part of. Out of those 120, about 30 are undergrads, uh, about uh, 60 to 65 are postgrads. The balance are PhDs. Excellent. Uh, I think uh, we are pretty much out of time at this point. Uh, Anant is going to be around for the rest of the morning, uh, so you can certainly catch him during the break. I couldn't get through all the questions, but he's one of the most accessible people that I've met at IITians. As IITians, we are all equals. So, uh, you know, it's great to have, you know, somebody like him within our presence. And thank you so much, thank Anand, you. for making thank time. You, thank you. We have a little memento for you. Oh, we have a little memento for you. Uh, uh, I would call it a coffee mug, but he doesn't drink coffee, so it's a tea mug. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's a, it's a great pleasure, Gunjan. Thank you for having Thank me. And, you uh, you know, this is a, like you, you know, in, in Tamil movies, you have a propensity for multiple roles. I'm an IIT alumnus. Uh, I've been on IIT Bombay's board, and uh, I'm also an a, 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 you know, active donor to IIT Delhi. So it's great fun. So guys, don't just be an alumnus, be a lot more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.